Hi, this is Artifacts of Mars. And this is part two. This is a discussion of Hymenoptera. See, this is one of the most advanced uh, group of animals, if you want to call them animals, or insects, obviously, in the animal kingdom. It's just amazing that all this can be ignored by science, like... What are you what are you thinking? You think they actually were designed? Of course I think they were designed. Okay, Hymenoptera is kind of a unique life cycle. I'm not going to paint them all with a broad brush, but I'll give you a general idea. And there's uh, over 100,000 species of these. I'm thinking I'm going to have to do uh, termites, because they have, they're in a different order. I thought they were in Hymenoptera, but they're not, and they have a different life cycle on top of this. Hymenoptera, you know what happens in a beehive? Let's go over that first. Let's say spring comes after a nasty winter, and these bees have been sitting there beating their wings all winter long. That's how they keep warm. They generate their own heat by beating their wings. So, Scout goes out looking for flowers. They're organizing scouts, workers, soldiers, and they're sterile females. So the scout goes out, finds an interesting group of flowers, and is attracted by sights and smells that uh, they shouldn't be attracted by because how the hell can they have, how the hell could the uh, plant have developed this if the plant didn't even know that insects existed? At any rate, they go out and find these flowers, they head back. And the scout goes up to the queen, and basically she wiggles her butt to tell the queen where everything is. In simpler terms, that's called language. Uh, the bee doesn't speak, she wiggles her butt, like I said. She does a little dance, and the queen is intelligent enough to figure that out. And then the queen, in turn, wiggles her butt to tell the workers where to go collecting pollen and uh, nectar and so forth. And they head out. You don't call that sophisticated? Uh, gee whiz. You don't, don't think somebody planned that? Of course somebody planned it. How could these insects figure all that out with a bunch of random mutations? They couldn't. It's absurd. Okay, so the workers go out, they collect pollen, they collect nectar, they bring it back to the nest. Well, what do they make on nectar? <laughs> Duh, they make honey. So the nest is a manufacturing facility. Manufacturing? Ah! Thought only humans did that. Eh. Wrong. So these insects go out, they collect the honey, they process the honey, uh, they do part of that in their stomachs, and they also evaporate air from it. They process the nectar into honey. And they use pollen food for food, and they have some bacteria that are necessary. Well, there you go. How, how did that arrangement ever happen? You mean to say that they depend on bacteria? Well, who found who first? You see what I'm getting at? There's so much of these interactions 
if everybody just evolved the way we're being told, um, there shouldn't be these complex interactions all over the place that required millions and millions of mutations to get everything just right. This is my point. This is uh, from the Orkin website. I'm assuming they know what they're talking about, that, which they do. Now, the bees, we've all seen a bee's nest. This is a very sophisticated building. I mean, the cells are six-sided, hexagons. And depending on the like queen will lay her egg in the cells and then they're sealed up and depending on what the uh, larvae are fed when they're hatched, they develop into different things. They don't get a choice in the matter. It's perfect communist society. It works for them, wouldn't work for us. Obviously not. Um, now, there's a special thing most people understand that with bees and ants, wasps, and so forth. Um, the way you get a male is the males are produced by a process called parthenogenesis. Basically from one fertilized egg. The queen lays an unfertilized egg and males are produced and then they go and mate with a new queen. And I think uh Jarlin will kill the old queen, but I'm not sure about that. At any rate, males have wings, which eventually they lose. Even with ants, they have wings. Which means somebody designed these things to fly. I mean, why would ants need wings? But they have them for this purpose, just for mating flight. At any rate, you look at the nests. They're like little cities, all, aren't they? They're very sophisticated. We have this behavior where we have sophisticated language and we have a sophisticated building or in the case of the ants it's a subterranean uh, building if you want to call it a building they hollow it out when they live underground the bees will uh, do a similar thing uh, with complete metamorphosis except that of course they seal up their young and their young until they're ready to emerge as adults. So what we have here is an extremely sophisticated community. This is my point here. I don't care whether you're talking about bees, wasps, hornets. It depends, too. Africanized bees aren't very good nesters. Those are obviously a problem. They escape uh, down in uh, Central America or whatever back in the 30s, and they're getting to be a pain in the neck, and they don't know how far they're actually going to be able to migrate. They hope they don't come all the way up here. Mostly, most of these are uh, vegetarians, but there are such things as soldier ants in uh, Africa. So, not all of them are vegetarians either. Anyway, so what we have here is an extremely sophisticated society. Hundreds of thousands, you know, over a hundred thousand species living right underneath and above us have these sophisticated societies with, they're able to communicate, they conduct war, 
they manufacture things like honey and they and they undergo the complete metamorphosis that I've talked about before. Duh! How could all this happen by a series of random mutations? It couldn't. I mean, give me a break. Uh, you want to take a pile of iron ore and over a few million years it gets turned into an automobile without somebody designing it? I don't think so. It's just not going to happen. But these insects ranging in numbers of hundreds of thousands have been encoded with this information and they know how to build things they manufacture they communicate they have all these sophisticated communicate communities and of course, many of them are dangerous to humans, like the Africanized bees and fire ants and so forth. So don't sit there and tell me that all this happened as a result of random mutations and accidents and all this. It's just, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, uh, horse dung. I don't... You know, I don't care. It's horse dung. That's all it is. Oh, and by the way, for you eco nuts, if you're determined to eat bugs, you might want to avoid the ants. Uh, they're in the family Formicity. Mm, they have formic acid for venom. Now, it's not exceptionally toxic because it's created in your muscles. That's what makes you uh, uh, your muscles sore when you exercise too much. That's just a little aside. So these insects have little cities underneath their feet, up in the trees. <laughs> They're actually... This is... A ci whole civilizations living right beside us. Now, they may not be as smart as us, but they outnumber us. I mean, they don't have the intelligence we do, they can't build computers or anything, that doesn't mean they're not smart. They're not intelligent. Yes, they are. And this is the point. They're intelligent, they're sophisticated. How do they get that way? By mutating? I don't think so. So, put that in your uh, pipe and smoke it. Uh, you, uh, atheist evolutionists. There's no way. All these different species, hundreds of thousands, over a hundred thousand of them, and they all developed these, uh, essentially cities and technology of sorts. They all, they can manufacture some ants. Uh, I actually heard, I think, aphids. I think there's an ant that herds aphids for food. I'd have to look that one up. But, uh, sufficient to say, these things, you know, have their little cities all over this planet. And they were here a long time before we were. And they're intelligent. That, th that shows planning. I don't care what anybody says. Where, where did they all learn all these behaviors? Where did they learn 
to metamorphosize um, like we're being told like they do um, where would they learn all these just uh, sophisticated behaviors there has to be a designer there has to be call it God call it Uh, aliens, you know, this uh, site here is saying there may be up to a million different species, and all of them know how to manufacture things, they all know how to build communities, they wage war, they care for the young. Give me a break. Somebody designed this, people. They couldn't have all learn this by just random mutations. I'm sorry. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching.